Yo friends, what's up? So Swell the other day released a new amazing feature which is error boundaries and basically the TLDR is when a part of your app shits itself it doesn't have to take the entire thing down so we can provide a fallback for example. And this is actually a part of Advent of Swell so this year instead of having challenges the Swell team is releasing a new feature until Christmas. So far we got error boundaries on day 1, day 2 we got each without S so you can iterate over items no problem and then now you can also export snippets and don't worry if you're not following this I'm going to give you a full report once the advent of Svelte is over. And another awesome thing you can participate in is last year's advent of Svelte challenges which are really awesome. So here is a bunch of challenges you could try this year using runes right so it's going to be really fun I think you have 24 challenges which is really awesome these are beautifully well crafted challenges that you can try to challenge yourself so you can do that if you want but basically if you're familiar with Svelkit I released a video a while ago on Svelkit routing and basically Svelkit had this feature kind of for route so for example if you have this sidebar header and the block section if the block section explodes for example it's not going to take your entire app down so Svelkit already has this concept and that is the beauty of nested routes so when a nested route in Svelkit shits itself it doesn't have to take the entire thing down. And now you can take this concept and apply it to components. And this feature is more impactful than you think because now that you have error boundaries now you can have things in Svelte like suspense, async data loading and etc. So you can expect some great things from Svelte in the near future. Alright but enough yapping let's get into error boundaries. But first here's a message from our sponsor. I'd like to thank this video sponsor, you, the viewer. You can support the channel through Patreon or a YouTube channel membership. Members get early access to videos, help shape the content and a special Discord role. You can find all of the links in the description. Thank you for your support. Alright, here I have a simple mouse coordinates component. And we're just tracking the coordinates of the mouse, but let's say for example that on accident this mouse value gets set to zero. So now when we try to assign the X or Y value it's going to throw an error. Any side of plus page.svelte is where I'm importing the mouse coordinates component. So let's look at our app. As you can see it works as expected and now when we click on this button it's going to throw an error. And as we can see now our app shit itself and we can't do anything right? We can click on this however much we want. The only course of action left to us is to reload this page. But thankfully we can use error boundaries. So we want to catch the error right? The first thing that we can do we can just say svelte boundary and we can place the component that we want to catch any errors of inside of here. Alright, so now we can save this, but we're going to see nothing is going to happen. So everything works, but now we go boom, and we're going to see we're not going to catch anything. And the reason for this is that you have to pass one of these two things to Svelte boundary for it to work. You either have to pass an on error or failed function. So for example, we can say on error. So what do you want to happen when you catch the error? So you can now get the error, you can send it to whatever you want, some service or whatever, as they say in the docs. And you can even make this even shorter. We can just say console log. And now we're going to see, let's refresh the page. And now when we go boom, we're actually going to catch the error. And by default, what happens is the content gets replaced by nothing. So the next thing we can do is actually provide a fallback. And we can do that using a snippet. So I can go here and I have a snippet for my snippet. So we can say failed. So now we can go here and we can pass this snippet here as an argument. Refresh. Let's go boom. And now we're going to see we get a fallback. But of course we don't have to do this. We can just use a snippet inside of here. And now it's going to become a prop. So we don't have to do this anymore. But wait there's more. You can also get the error from fail. So now we can for example say error dot message. Let's go back here. So now when everything goes boom you're going to get the error here. And another thing you can do is you can use a reset function given by the failed function. So you can, for example, take reset. Let's create a button. I can say reset and then let's just say on click reset. Thank you. All right. So now if I save this, you're going to actually see. Let me just refresh for good measure. Now when it goes boom and when I click reset, Svelte is actually going to recreate the content. And now you can see everything works the same as before. And if you're using TypeScript to type this, as we can see for the types, if you go back here to failed, we can see this is a snippet. So error is unknown and reset is just a function. So I don't think there is really any type that you can import, but you can just type it like this. So this can be avoid. And a problem with this, if we say unknown, it's still going to complain. So you can just use any. And what's also interesting, let's just console dir error. And I'm also going to remove this on error because it's annoying me. 
All right, so now I'm going to reload this. Let's go boom. And now we're going to log this object. This is really interesting. On it, there is this thing, component stack, the message, and the stack. So I'm actually not sure why this isn't just type because you actually know in advance what these things are, but I don't know, maybe this is something they update in the future, right? But yeah, that's how simple it is to provide a fallback. What's also interesting is that if you throw an error back, it's going to be caught by another boundary higher up. So let's actually look at this example. So we can say on error, we're going to get E, right? So we have error code. Let me refresh. We're going to see error code. And let's say, for example, that an error throws here for some reason. So you can just go back here and let's say row E. And I'm just going to create another boundary. And here we're going to say, say error code. All right. And also this is complaining. So let's just do this. All right. So basically in this error boundary, if it throws again, it's going to be caught by a boundary higher up. So we should see this message error caught, right? Let's go back here. I'm going to reload. And now everything works. Let's go boom. And we're going to see the error is going to be caught. All right. There is one more thing that I want to show you. And that is how you can use on error and reset outside the error boundary. So they have a wonderful example here. In fact, I'm just going to copy it. So let's just copy it. And let's just paste it in. Let's just say mouse coordinates. So here we can define our own on error function. So we can type the error. We can just say error in this case, and this is going to be our function, nothing special. All right, so we can set the error outside the error boundary and we can have our reset function here. So we can just update it. And because event handlers are just regular props, we can just do this, which is really beautiful. So we can just say on error here. And now we can just check, hey, if there's an error, we can handle it outside the error boundary. So here we have a button with an onclick method. We're going to set the error to null, and then we're going to reset it so it recreates the content. All right, so now if I go to our example, refresh for good measure, now we're going to see everything works fine the same as before. But now if we go boom, we're going to see, oops, try again. And now let's do that. And we're going to see everything works the same as before. That's it. That's everything you have to know about Svelte error boundaries. And as always, I'm going to put all of the links in the description. If you like what you've seen, don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.